On this episode of This is Game Boy Light, we shoot down a space dragon. Welcome back to a brand new episode of This Is Game Boy Light. Uh, Light episode 47 already. Wow, we have already done so many episodes. It's it's getting kind of crazy. But yeah, here we are again, or here I am again, Mula. Because uh, of course this is a light, so I am alone. Alone? Alone even. Yes, I can talk for sure. So yeah, before we dive into uh, this episodes game. Uh, let's go over a little of uh, what I have been up to uh, since our last live recording, that is. Um, it was kind of busy because we had a fundraising marathon on uh, Retro Gaming Live TV called RG Love 2020. So I was kind of busy with that. I played through all Mega Man Game Boy games in one sitting, which was a lot of fun. Um, one day I just Cancelled sleep percent because it was only an hour anyways, uh, and I played through the boat of well boat two of the turtles games on Game Boy And then there was an incentive that got met where I tried to play through Mega Man Extreme and Extreme 2 But that went pretty pretty badly. So uh, let's not talk about that anymore uh, But besides that I've not been playing that many games um, for portable pleasure my uh, Game Boy system challenge I actually I actually was able to beat George Foreman's KO Boxing, uh, for people who don't know what that is. It's pretty much poverty punch-out. It doesn't work as well as it should be. Um, I had played it before and I couldn't get anywhere, but uh, I, I think it was like two years ago and I tried it again and this time I was a little better at it and I was able to uh, beat it in like five or six hours I, I don't exactly remember but yeah this is like the only quote-unquote punch-out game that there is on Game Boy go check it out but it's definitely not an easy one uh, but it's definitely doable um, if you need any quote-unquote tips I guess go uh, check out my YouTube channel to see how I, uh, I beat all the opponents uh, it always helps like it's the same system as punch-out but it just doesn't work as well. Um, I've also played Bomb Disposer, which is a Sachen slash Kumin game. Common or Kumin? Common. Yeah, I think it's Common. Um, which is literally Dr. Mario. <laughs> That's It's literally the same game and it has uh, one of the most excruciating soundtracks ever made, probably. Uh, go check it out if you want to hear what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, it, it was basically Dr. Mario. It keeps going. Um, so the goal was just to beat level 20. That's like the last one you can select and afterwards it just keeps on going. Um, but yeah, that's all for Game Boy really. Um, and on uh, console, uh, I finally bought the uh, Spider-Man DLC, The City That Never Sleeps. I've been waiting for it for a long time to go on sale. Uh, it finally happened, so I picked it up because I wanted to play it for a long time. So I'm slowly working through that. I've finish the first out of the three parts uh but yeah it's just more spider-man so spider-man is awesome uh and as you all know i love spider-man so uh yeah that, it's a good time so i'll uh, try and finish that as soon as possible um and then i've also replayed blaster master zero on the switch um i got some money back from nintendo because of shenanigans with the Binding of Isaac DLC. Um, so I had enough money to buy Blaster Master Zero 2 and 3 while they were on sale. But it was since the release of Switch, because Blaster Master Zero came out on release, at least in Japan. Um, so it, 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 it was a, a while ago that I played Blaster Master Zero, so I played it again, and I think I finished it in like an afternoon or something. It wasn't that big of a game, but I'm looking forward to playing Mas Blaster Master Zero 2 and 3 afterwards, actually. 
But yeah, that's pretty much all I have been up to when it comes to gaming. Uh, I have a lot of other projects going on at the moment uh, that have nothing to do with Game Boy or gaming. Um, so yeah, I haven't had that much time to dive into uh, into actually playing or beating games now. So yeah, uh, with that said, let's uh, get ready to dive into this episode on Burai Fighter Deluxe by listening to one of uh, the songs from the game. Be right back. And here we are again. So yeah, let's uh, take a look at Burai Fighter Deluxe. Probably a game lots of people have seen but maybe never played before. Um, at least in my case, that, that that was how it was for for the majority of my younger life. Like I saw it everywhere, but I never actually played the game. Uh, so this game came out in Japan on the 27th of June 1990 under the name of Burai Senshi Deluxe. Uh, it was actually made at the same time as the NES game, but this one was released first. Um, I don't know why they call it Deluxe, because it's definitely a downgrade compared to the NES version. Uh, but yeah, they, they called this one Deluxe for whatever reason. Um, the US got this game in January of 1991, so like half a year later. And like always, for Europe it just says 1991. Uh, it's probably like February or March, I would imagine. Um, the game was developed by KID. Uh, which is actually an, uh, an acronym standing for Kindle Imaging Develop. Uh, and they were a Japan-based company specializing in porting and developing, and I don't know how to pronounce this, uh, Bishojo games. Um, and if you don't know what that is, I didn't know either, but luckily Wikipedia is helping me out here a little bit. A Bishoujo game or Gal game is a type of Japanese video game centered on interactions with attractive girls. These games are a subgenre of dating sims targeted towards a heterosexual male audience. Uh, so yeah, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, they don't exist anymore, but they did make other games as well, not just... Uh, not just those types of games. Um, and I'll take a look at the list here right now. There are a few um, that may sound familiar. Of course, Burai Fighter and Burai Fighter Deluxe. Uh, but for NES, they also made Low G-Man or Low Gravity Man, which is a really cool game. They made Kickmaster. They made uh, G.I. Joe 1 and 2. So the normal one and Atlantis Factor. Um, they made Sumo Fighter, but I don't think that's... Oh, no, it is the Game Boy one. That's actually the game we're going to talk about next uh, episode. So that's pretty cool. And lo and behold, lo and behold, they made Pepsi Man. Oh, yeah. The best game ever, Pepsi Man. So yeah, that's that's a little bit of what they've been up to. Uh, but for this game, they work together with Texam, and that's usually where the collaboration comes from with the NES games as well, Texam. Um, and Texam is a brand of Kaga Electronics, uh, which is a Tokyo, Japan-based uh, um, company, but Texam was actually founded in the United Kingdom, and they also had a UK, uh, US branch, actually. And yeah, they work together with uh, with Kit a lot to make games for the NES and things like that. Um, a few of their games that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, Star Soldier for NES, Fist of the North Star for NES, Mappy Land. Everybody knows that game probably. Uh, Serpent for Game Boy. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, I've played that once for sure. Um, and yeah, the rest are those games I've mentioned uh, that Kit actually developed. Um, the composer for this... Um, for this game is uh, Norio Nakagata, um, but actually he is not credited 
in the Game Boy version at all. Um, and apparently not in the NES version either. So he's always uncredited, but that's the person who made this soundtrack. Um, looking at the other soundtracks he produced, there's not much that I recognize, to be honest. Low G-Man, okay, sure, but... Isolated Warrior, okay, yeah, that one I do know. Um, um, yeah, the last one he made was Poop. Power Rangers Super Samurai. <laughs> well, I almost said Pua Rangers because it said Super Samurai, uh, which was in 2012. I don't know what else he did. He actually didn't do the music at all. He's just the executive director. Uh, so yeah, Norio Nakagata made the soundtrack for this game. So yeah, if you're wondering what kind of game this is, this is basically a shmup. Um, both vertically and horizontally, so um, not like kind of like Life Force, isn't that one boat as well? If I'm not mistaken, or one of the other ones, Salam, but Salamander is Life Force, right? Whatever, I, I keep confusing those Konami shoot 'em ups, uh, but yeah, this one goes uh, goes all over the place in the same level, even it goes up and down and left and right. So, what is this game actually about? Let's dive into the plot of this game. So, your mission to defeat the mighty Burai. For thousands of years, the Burai have had but one objective, the conquest of the universe. They have created huge armies of robo-mutants, half-robot and half-living flesh. With capabilities to produce thousands of robo-mutants each day, the Burai armies will soon overrun the galaxy, unless you can stop them. Strap on your proton pack, charge up your laser cannon, and prepare to do battle with the deadliest army of mutant rogues to come along in years. Your challenge is to penetrate the five bases of the Burai, confront the super mutant guards, monstrous creatures like Giganticrap, Jossipede, Fangskull, and ultimately, you'll face a terrifying slime dragon. Using your awesome arsenal of weapons, victory may be within your reach. Can you save the universe from the torment of the evil Burai? We're all depending on you. So yeah, not a special plot at all. Like usual, you go up into space to fight some alien race trying to take over either Earth or the universe or whatever it is. And uh, you're a lone soldier, uh, not in a ship. <laughs> you're actually flying yourself. Uh, but yeah, you're going to defeat the space dragon. Yes, 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 yes. So, how do you do that, actually? Well, let's take a look at the gameplay. Uh, for controls, it's really simple, basically. Uh, the D-pad moves you around in all eight directions. The B button allows you to shoot uh, in all of those directions. And when you hold the B button down, you basically lock into one of these directions and you can move around freely. Uh, but you keep shooting in the same direction. Uh, the A button is used to uh, drop a cobalt bomb if you have the energy for it. And I'll get back to that uh, when we go over the items, actually, which I am going to do now. So we have a few items that can help us on our quest to... Uh, to fight the Burai. Uh, the most thing you will see in this game are capsules, uh, and these capsules usually have a letter on them. Um, they cycle through three letters, uh, L, M, and R, and those are basically your type of weapons. Um, you start off with a normal laser shot, I guess, or pea shooter, whatever you want to call it. Um, the L will upgrade your laser weapon, the M will upgrade your missile weapon, and the R will upgrade your ring weapon. Uh, the way this works is that each of these power-ups or uh, special weapons have 10 levels on them. So each time you pick up an L, an M, or an R, um, the number on your hut will increase by one and will go up to A because they can't show 10, I guess, if they went with A. So yeah, it starts at zero, one through nine, and then it goes to A. You might think that all of these will upgrade to your weapon by one, but that's not the case. Um, it's actually zero, well, one through four is uh, base damage, 
5 through 9 is uh, the second tier of that weapon, and the A is the final tier of that weapon. Um, it kind of depends on which weapon you are using, but it will upgrade to fire into multiple directions, or it will create a spread shot, or it will just shoot missiles while you're still shooting your normal gun as well so it's kind of depending dependent on what you like the most for sure what you want to use probably the ring one is the most use, useful because it does have a spread shot at the end but uh in my opinion they all work pretty well for any situation Besides that, those capsules can also hold the letter B, which is just bonus points, so that's not really that important. Um, but there's also these ones that have stars on them. And what these stars do, they will actually unlock a bonus path leading you to more upgrades. Um, I think I'll get back to that a little later. Um, besides that, there's one more capsule that is very rare to find, usually in a bonus pad, and that is a 1-up, and it just shows a 1, um, so it doesn't cycle through anything, it's just a 1. Um, you can also find a black circle thingy, which is basically a pot, and if you've ever played like uh, Gradius or R-Type, that is basically your option or your orbital helper. Um, it spins around you at a very slow speed at the start and can take down enemies. Each time you pick up another pot, you don't get another one, but it just speeds up a little. And I think there's five levels to it. Uh, I've never been able to get the full one myself. Uh, but yeah, you only have one and it spins around you in a circle. Um, besides the pot, most enemies will also drop these kind of diamonds. And these are actually used to fill up that cobalt bomb meter that I talked about before, where you need energy. Um, as long as you have energy, can, you can use the A button to do basically a screen uh, bomb. So it destroys everything that is on screen the entire time. Uh, if you happen to fill up the entire bar, however, it will reset to zero, but you do get an extra life. So it's kind of dependent on if you feel comfortable enough never using the bombs just to gain more extra lives, or if you're really in a scary situation and you want to get out of it, you do have some energy, you can sacrifice it to, uh, to escape unharmed, basically. Um, Going back to the weapons a little bit, the laser, the missile, and the ring, you can freely select between these weapons, but it actually changes to the last upgrade you picked up. So if you would happen to have a missile on hand and you pick up a laser, you will go to laser. If you pick up a ring, you will go to ring. Um, and this is actually a very cool system because if you would happen to get hit, and yes, this is a shmup, so you will die in one hit, you only use the weapon you you currently have activated. So let's say you have laser, missile, and ring completely upgraded, you're using the ring, you die, you only lose the levels of the ring. They will reset back to zero, however. It's not going down by uh, one power level, it's, it's totally gone. So that makes it a little easier uh, to get back to where you were unless you are in a really awful situation and you can't get an upgrade to change to the other uh, missiles or, or laser or ring, um, then it can get a little uh, daunting to get through anything. But at least you know once you pick up one of those other weapons and you have it upgraded, uh, you're back to quote-unquote full strength. So that's a really cool system that they implemented for this game. So yeah, those are basically... Um, like the controls and the items and things like that, how you play this game. Uh, there are, of course, a few differences between the Game Boy and the NES version, even though they're almost the same game. Um, the first thing, of course, is the Game Boy version is a lot slower, uh, which is good if you're not that familiar with shmups. It uh, does uh, decrease the difficulty of it uh, quite a lot. Um, it also has way less enemies on screen because it would only slow the game down even more. Um, and then there is the quote-unquote problem of the small screen size. Um, this makes it so that you don't have a full overview of your current whereabouts. Um, how they 
fixed this. I'm not, yeah, it's not really fixed, but how they got around this was that if you move to the edge of the screen, either up, down, left or right, depending on where you're going, the screen will slowly start scrolling so you can reach the edge of uh, the maze you are currently in. Um, this has some good applications, but also very bad applications, um, especially because enemies spawn outside of the screen and if you don't know they are gonna spawn there and you're trying to scroll the screen that way they will just spawn right on top of you making you lose a life so it's not always a good idea to uh to push on the screen it's actually better to stay in the middle of the screen but the power-ups are usually hidden in a way that you do have to scroll the screen so there's that of course so um it's it's risky to do but you have to do it anyways the good thing about this game is like i said it has way less enemies than the nes version would have so once you know where they are it's not that bothersome to get around them they're not constantly spawning right on top of you you do have a few seconds to uh to check your surroundings in this version um and the final difference is that they took out the two top-down levels from the NES version, um, probably because they couldn't implement it into the Game Boy version as well. But yeah, the NES version has two top-down levels where you're basically walking around on the floor um, trying to find a boss. It's like an open-world level where you're trying to locate the boss. So those are not in this game. Um, so it decreases the stages from a total of seven to a total of five. So yeah, that takes us right into the stages. Um, there's not that much to say about the stages themselves. They are they are not that distinguished uh, to give them a proper team. Like it, it's not even in the uh, manual that they, they are like special zones or things like that. So. I'm not gonna deep dive into all of these uh, levels by themselves, but we will go over uh, the bosses for each stage. So at the end of each stage slash maze, uh, you will come across a boss, and they are in the manual, so let me just uh, grab them here, because they have a little uh, description with them, so I can get over them. No, I can I can go over them, not get over them. Get getting over it with uh, with Mula. Um, so the first uh, level um, puts you against the Gigantic Crab. Beware of his flailing tentacles and the venom, which he spits at a furious pace. He will trap you in a corner if you're not careful. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go over how to defeat these bosses. They're all super simple. Uh, believe me. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna go over that, but yeah, this, this is a crap with two spinning things on it, and you have to shoot the things on his other things to take care of the thing. Yeah, that's that's how you do it. <laughs> that's that's my hot tip of the day. <laughs> All right, level two puts you against uh, Jossy Pete. Uh, this is basically a worm that splits up when you shoot their uh, their vulnerable zone uh, these guys are tough shoot the connection points and they will separate into a wiggling mass of terror then blast their tails to destroy each section and, and that's jossy pete it's just uh, a long a long worm basically <laughs> all right in the third stage we go against fang skull um which is a bunch of skulls put together kind of like legion i guess from castlevania uh, kind of resembles that. And this not-so-jolly Roger will chase you while firing, firing his deadly bone bullets. But don't let him scare you. He's not as fierce as he looks. To make matters worse, you must also avoid the falling platforms. So yeah, you will see it when you get to that boss. There are platforms that spawn from time to time. It's, it's, uh, it's not that hard, again. The... This is really not that hard of a game. Um, level 4, we got Torchwing. This gal has a nasty disposition. She will attack with a spinning circle of fireballs. Her domain is near the volcanic fire spouts, so you must stay clear of the giant shooting flames. Uh, it, she look, At least here, she looks like a harpy. 
with fireballs. I mean, not nothing more that I can say about it. <laughs> That's all. And then in the end, yeah, at the end of level 5, we face off against Slime Dragon. This green scaled slime ball is the master of the Burai and easily your most fearsome adversary. He will shoot molten rock curveballs, which are indestructible. Keep on your toes, or you'll end up as Dragon Bait. So, yeah, Slime Dragon is the final boss of Burai Fire Deluxe. Um, he takes a lot of hits. Compared to all the other bosses, it's incredible how many hits he takes. Uh, he's not hard at all, but yeah, wow, it takes a while to uh, to kill this guy for sure. So yeah, those are like the five bosses of the stages. Uh, the other ones are just normal, like in-depth all these stages are just standard shmup levels. Avoid the enemies, um, avoid the hazards, um, but they do... Put you in an awkward position, especially during level 5, where there are a lot of dead ends that you don't see coming because of the tiny screen. And then you're gonna scream because you took the wrong path. Luckily, it's only like 3 or 4 times, I believe, that that happens. Uh, but it is kind of annoying that they, uh, that they did that. I mean, it's never fun going into a direction and then just ending up in a place you can't escape from anymore. Um, so keep that in mind for sure. But all the other stages are pretty self-explanatory. So I said that this game isn't that difficult. Uh, this game does have three difficulties where you can choose from. Uh, one called Eagle, one called Albatross, one called Ace. So it's easy, medium, and hard. Um, and depending on the difficulty level, the enemies will either take more hits, be more aggressive, and there will also be other and newer enemies during the stages, depending on the difficulty. Uh, bosses will, of course, have a lot more health as well, so I can only imagine how many shots Slime Dragon will take. Um, and a cool thing about this game is if you beat one difficulty, let's say you start on Eagle, you finish the game, you can actually choose one of the next ones in line. Like, you can go to Albatross, but you can also immediately go to Ace. Um, once you do that, you actually keep the score you had from your previous playthrough, you keep all the items you had, so all the upgrades you had, and you keep all your lives. So you can, like, progress through all of the difficulties to get to the end. <clears throat> so, you think... Wow, I'm gonna beat Ace now, I beat Slime Dragon, er, Dragon, Dragon, there we go. Uh, the game is over. Nope, you are absolutely wrong because there is a hidden difficulty called Ultimate, or Very Hard in this case. Um, which, again, takes you through all the levels with more, uh, more things to fight off. And reaching the end of that actually gets you to the quote-unquote, real ending of the game. Depending on your skill with shmups, you can choose whatever difficulty level you want. Um, it doesn't change anything, really, besides a picture at the end of the game. Um, but if you want to challenge yourself, you can go uh, through ultimate mode. Um, the game does give you passwords for each stage on each difficulty level. So if you ever reach um, a certain... Uh, stage and you want to redo it there are passwords that can take you there if you do the password however do keep in mind that you start with uh nothing and just your three lives from the start so uh, definitely keep that in mind but yeah it offers a challenge for everybody um if you're not familiar with mups try eagle if you're really familiar with mups try ace or even play through ultimate mode Another thing this game has, which is actually really cool, but I haven't been able to test it myself because I don't have two Game Boys or another person to play with for that matter. But this game does offer a versus mode and the versus mode is basically a race mode between two players, each on their own screen. So you pick a level or you just start at the start, I actually have no idea, and you have to race uh, <clears throat> the other player to the end. The first person to beat the boss wins. Um, this mode does offer an extra item. Um, there's one enemy in the game that if you shoot it will always drop a power-up capsule. Um, 
there is an extra enemy in versus mode uh, that will appear on both players' screen at the same time. Doesn't matter where they are at that point. Uh, so um, if you have uh, the the person who shoots it down the first will get a capsule, uh, and that is a special capsule which either downgrades the other player's weapon, empties the other player's cobalt bomb bar, or slows them down. So that gives you a little advantage if you happen to defeat that thing before your opponent. Um, a thing I forgot to mention, I was gonna come back to it, but I forgot it. Um, there are the stars that you could pick up that I mentioned. Uh, they actually take you to a hidden path with, with more upgrades. Um, I kinda mentioned that. So if you go through the level normally, you will see the road is always the same. The, player will uh, just go through the same uh, same map each time but if you happen to find one of those stars they will take you to another path in some uh, in some junctions where you can pick up more items um, it depends on the stage how many there are I think in the first one there's three in the second one there's three and in all the other ones there's only two um, but they're fun to find they're very easy to find actually um, I found them all during my replay um, so it, it it's not that hard to find them um, so definitely look out for them because they do usually contain like a lot of upgrades and one-ups that you can use throughout the rest of the game so uh, it's always a good time to look for those stars so uh, sorry that I forgot to mention that before but yeah, that's basically all that uh, Burai Fighter Deluxe has to offer. Maybe the Deluxe comes from the Versus mode. I don't know. Maybe that's why they call it Deluxe. Who knows? <laughs> Alright, let us take a look at uh, the cover art. I always love the cover art, especially the US European one. Uh, for for bright fighter deluxe uh, on top you just have the logo um but it's basically a red background with slime dragon uh trying to attack the main character who's unnamed i guess as far as i can tell it wasn't in the in the manual either uh but yeah it's like the dragon kind of shenron looking uh coming coming towards you the player um and you're the space marine with a proton jetpack on your back with a laser gun and the option thingy is uh, flying around you. It's very colorful, um, it, it's very comic book like so uh, of course I would, <laughs> I would like it. But it always caught my eye even as a child uh, even though I never actually played the game back then. Uh, but it's really cool. It also has a Texan logo on it and right underneath the dragon's mouth but it, but it's pretty cool i i really like the design of this one so uh yeah that's awesome uh looking at the japanese one that one wouldn't catch my eye immediately it basically has the logo at the top and then it shows you um i would say like a gundam <laughs> robot mech yeah it, it's weird like because it's really not a mech you're playing as at all it's it's really just a guy with a jetpack so i don't know why they went with that probably because gundam is so uh so popular in japan but yeah it's just a gundam shooting towards the towards the screen basically uh that's all i can say it, it has the optimus prime colors even <laughs> or transformer yeah yeah not i don't have much to say about this one it's Typical mech drawing, Japanese mech drawing, so that's all there's to it. So we do have some trivia about this game. Uh, the first one is this game got quote-unquote remade for the Game Boy Color. Uh, in Japan it was released as Burai Fighter Color. Uh, in the US and EU it got released as Space Marauder. Um, and that is probably the better version of this game because it has a lot less lag than the Game Boy version has. So if you think this game is a little bit too slow for your liking, check out Space Marauder. Or Burai Fighter Color uh, for a Game Boy Color. Um, it's the better version of this game, sadly. Uh, 
So yeah, check it out if you want to. It also has a lot more color, of course, because it is Game Boy Color. Um, but there's a one really weird thing about this game, and I'm just calling it the blow-up bug, because I cannot find any actual information about this. Um, but for some reason, you can only play uh, Burai Fighter Deluxe on an actual Game Boy, on a Super Game Boy 2, and that's all I can confirm, actually. <laughs> or on an emulator that really emulates the hardware. If you would happen to play on a Game Boy Color, a Game Boy Pocket, a Game Boy Light, a Game Boy Advance, and I'm not sure, but maybe the Game Boy Player, uh, because it does emulate an Advance, basically. Um, for some reason, when you enter the boss fight in the second level, your character will just blow up out of nowhere. Um, there's nothing hitting you. It can happen within one second. It can happen uh, after like three seconds. But your character will just blow up and you will uh, not be able to finish that stage at all. Um, I've been trying to find information about this for years actually. Uh, what it could be. Um, I've even asked people to maybe check it out. With like some tools in an emulator or things like that. I don't know. Uh, how it works uh, really I'm, I'm not a tech guy as you all probably already know um, but yeah it would be cool to get some confirmation on why exactly this happens um, I mean there's two possibilities in my opinion either it is a unforeseen hardware bug because there are a few other games where that happens I think Road Rash for Game Boy doesn't work on Game Boy Player. Um, it just crashes and that's due to a hardware bug. Uh, it's either that or it was a very early like copy protection thing uh, to make sure that you would only be playing, playing it on an actual original Game Boy and not some copy hardware. Um, if that's the case that would be really cool but um, it, it's probably gonna be the former. Probably. Uh, but again, if somebody knows more about this or can figure out how this actually happens, uh, yeah, please check it out and let us know. That would be really cool if we could get some uh, some confirmation about that. Sadly, I cannot <laughs> reach out to Kid because one day they don't exist anymore and they're Japanese. Um, but yeah, this is the only Game Boy game that I know where this happens. So it's it's really interesting, at least. All right, let's take a look at the general reception of this game. Actually, people kind of really liked this game back when it came out. Um, they made comparisons to like R-Type on Game Boy and things like that, saying that R-Type probably was a little better. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess I can agree because that's a more established series. Uh, but I think this is a really cool game for sure. Uh, but yeah, it, it basically the lowest score it got was a 6 out of 10. Uh, but everything else was basically above 75 out of 100. So uh, it got some really good reviews. And I think the Game Boy Color version uh, got even better reviews, of course. Uh, because it just was a lot smoother than this version. But it is the same game. Uh, so that's pretty good for this game. Yep, yep. Very nice. Um... So my history with this game, like I said already, I don't really have a history with this game. Like, I saw it in magazines constantly, I did not know anybody who had it and I didn't play it as a kid. So the first time I played it was a few years ago. I was playing it on my Game Boy Color or my Game Boy Advance and I blew up and I was like, what? <laughs> so then I tried it on my Super Game Boy and then luckily I could play through the game. But yeah, that was very weird. Um, in my opinion, this is a very beginner-friendly shoot-em-up, especially on the lowest difficulty. Uh, so it's a good starting point, like a lot of shmups on Game Boy, really, uh, if, if you want to dive into the genre. Uh, but the screen scrolling and the size of the screen uh, do make up for some very unfair deaths. Like I said, due to enemies spawning right on top of you because they, they spawn outside of the seeable screen, basically. And the few death traps in the mazes are 
kind of unforgivable, but I can imagine they couldn't change too much. But um, So I'm sure those are frustrating for some people, but there's not that many of them. Uh, and the stages are relatively small and the game is relatively short. So once you know where to go, it should not pose a problem at all. Uh, I definitely recommend this game. Um, and also for the soundtrack, actually. I really, really like the soundtrack of this game. All right, before we wrap this up, um, I'm taking a quick look at the Borai Fighter Deluxe speedrun page here. Uh, there's only two runs, and they are very, very old. So, um, yeah, maybe check them out if you're looking for a new shmup to speedrun. Uh, there's only runs for Eagle Mode. Like I said, there's three other difficulties that... Uh, that you can go through, or even all four of them, if you're really good at the game. Uh, the Any% percent for Eagle world record from four years ago by Antrosperus uh, is sitting at 19 minutes and 30 seconds. I assume they just skip all the bonus parts as well, of course, because this is a speedrun, and you don't really need them. So yeah, it's been a while. Uh, it's been a dead leaderboard for quite a while, so if you're looking for something, that might be... A good one to start with. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, that about wraps up everything I can say about the game. Uh, one thing I do wanted to mention briefly, and maybe we will start doing this in later episodes as well, um, because whenever I do it, people seem to be interested in it, and don't know it exists. So um, there's actually a website called Retro Achievements uh, where people make lists of achievements for uh, older games, so retro games. Um, all you have to do is like make an account and you can download either a dedicated emulator for a specific system or you can use RetroArc where you can just enable achievements. Um, and then you log in with your information and then a trophy list or an achievement list gets loaded onto uh, onto your game. So if you're looking for a way to extend your gameplay for games you really like or to explore them a little more or get some extra challenge out of them, uh, out of these, these retro games, um, you can do that. And this game does have a list. Um, it's basically... And sadly, this this is uh, something that happens with a lot of Game Boy lists, so I don't always recommend them, and I definitely don't recommend trying to go for all of these. Um, but it's basically beat the entire game all difficulties without ever dying is one of them. Uh, that, that one is crazy, but there's also ones for just beating a stage without dying on a certain difficulty or getting all the upgrades or finding all the secret paths, things like that. So if you like this game, you want a, a little bit more out of it, you can always check out uh, Retro Achievements. Uh, that's uh, retroachievements.org, actually. So yeah, maybe in the future, if there is a list, we might, uh, might go over them really quickly as well. Because why not? So yeah, again, that wraps up everything I have to say about this game. So let's take... Take? No, let's just listen uh, to another song from this uh, cool soundtrack on Game Boy. And then I will say my goodbyes when I get back. Welcome back everybody. So let's see, we got a few listener questions, so um, <laughs> let's take a look at them. Uh, I've already seen them uh, and I'm not gonna be much help, I'm afraid. Um, so Grad and Hero asks, why is the difficulty setting named after golf terms and or birds? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have literally no idea because it sounded well, I guess. 
I don't. I mean, it's a guy taking flight, so eagle and albatross and ace makes sense. Ultimate is just ultimate, of course. But uh, yeah, I think it's just. <laughs> they had to go with something, right? So, and it's a little bit more fun than easy, medium, and hard. So there we go. Um, e bloody candy asks, why is it called Burai Fighter when there is no fighting? Again, <laughs> I have no idea. Burai Shooter just sounded dumb, I guess. So they just went with Burai Fighter. You are fighting the Burai. You're just using a gun and not fists. So, so there you go. Um, I think that's the <laughs> yeah. These are the only questions actually, <laughs> except for this one. And I still don't understand this meme, and I will never do. Uh, why do they call it oven when you off in the cold food, off out hot eat the food? I I still don't know what that means at all. I, I assume it's like a bad translation or or whatever. It it's just dumb. I don't even get the joke. Like it's it's just really really dumb. Uh, but those were <laughs> those were all the questions we had for uh, for this game. So yeah, that wraps up the entire episode. Like always, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, you can drop them uh, on our SoundCloud or uh, or on our Discord or by contacting any of us on our uh, social media platforms. You can find me on Twitch, on uh, YouTube, on Twitter, and on Instagram, all slash Moolah, and that is spelled M-O-E-L-L-E-U-H. You can find my co-host, Ebloody Candy, on Twitch, uh, YouTube, and Twitter, uh, and Instagram as well, actually, also just e bloody candy. Uh, you can find our producer, who is hopefully not pissed at me because I did use the correct microphone this time uh, unlike during our Metroid episodes uh, you can find her on uh, Twitch as Sprinting Legs on Twitter as Sprinting Legs on YouTube as Legs and also on her own project website SprintingLegs.com of course you can also find like clickable buttons on our website this is Gameboy.com. Makes it a lot easier to go to all these uh, things. Maybe I should add the Instagram things on the website, actually. I, sh I should probably do that. Um, but yeah, you can also now find us uh, through Retro Gaming Live TV on Twitch, where we will be basically doing all the full episodes uh, live uh, when we record them, if we can. Um, because there's always other things going on, of course, on that uh, on that channel. So it all depends on our own schedule. But normally we will try we will try to do all the episodes live from now on out, at least the full ones, not the, not the light ones. So make sure to follow Retro Gaming Live TV on Twitch if you want to catch us live. We also announce it on our uh, on our Twitter and. Uh, on RGL's Twitter, basically, so uh, you can keep up with that. Um, if you want to support the podcast uh, with some sweet cash, you can do that. We do have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash thisisgameboy, where you can opt in for a uh, monthly subscription-based plan uh, for whatever amount of money you like, starting at $1. This provides you with some incentives, or bonus things, I guess, is better. Yeah, <laughs> probably better to say bonus bonus stuff. Um, you get access to our exclusive Patreon channels on the Discord. You get access to our episodes notes. You get access to early. Uh, you get early access to our Hunt Hunter episodes. So that's uh, a YouTube exclusive Let's Play show that me and. Uh, E bloody candy are doing where we play quote unquote horror inspired games. Uh, we we try to make them funny, of course. We we're not there to spook uh, everybody out of their pants, but uh, you do get like a month before they get released on YouTube. Uh, patrons get access to those, um, and yeah. Uh, so 
those are the things you can find on there. If you do not like these monthly subscription based things, we also have a PayPal, of course, uh, paypal.me slash this is Game Boy. If you want to support us one time, you can do that through that, of course. Um, but please let us know who you are if you are on our Discord so we can give you access to like the uh, special channels as well because we do want to give you some benefit uh, to supporting us with money. Um, if you like stuff, like physical stuff, uh, for supporting us, we do have a store which you can access through merch.thisisgameboy.com. Uh, we're currently still just selling a mug and a t-shirt. T-shirt comes in three different colors, uh, but that is uh, always a nice thing to have, of course. They are great quality, um... Again, I, we keep mentioning this, but we keep washing them and the <laughs> like the print is still the same as it was when we bought them. So, uh, yeah, can definitely say this is, a, this is a good quality shirt. So if you want one of those, you can grab them. Um, if you just want to support us the other way without giving us money, there's an easy way to do that. Just like comment on episodes, like episodes, uh, rate the podcast or an episode itself on whatever you are uh, using to listen to us. Um, just leave a review, a good review, preferably, of course, unless you, you really don't like us. That's that's okay as well. Um, again, why are you still listening then in the first place, I guess? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, just do that because it helps out a lot to uh, get us a higher upon the lists of podcasts out there because there's like millions of them so um yeah that that's that really helps us out so yeah um again you can find all of the links to everything on this is gameboy.com so you can always visit that uh but yeah that's uh that's pretty much it i believe so i will take my leave and uh, i will see you together with ebc uh, next time for an episode on Sumo Fighter. Don't forget, we are going to record this live, so come check it out on Retro Gaming Live TV if you can. Uh, see you all later. Okay, this should be the correct mic. It shows a correct mic. So that's a good start. <laughs>